This is Twit. First review, actually, I've seen the, of the Intel Hades Canyon Nook is up on Tech Radar, and uh, this is essentially um, a Nook with discrete graphics. Uh, this is the Super Nook they kind of announced back at CES using the Intel uh, AMD Ryzen graphics processors. Um, this is pretty, or I should say, the Radeon RX Vega graphics. You know, it's it's um, it's cool, and uh, yeah, you know. Uh, we, um, I don't know how I actually, feel about the skull graphic on the front, but and it's it's not you know it's a lot less. It's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's like um it's like backlit and you can change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually like RGB controllable, right? I think. Um, and uh, we actually had uh, Ken did the review of this for us. Um, we oh. actually have one. Our, yeah, we have a review of this up today as well. Um. I did not see it, was, it when I was scrolling through the stories this afternoon or this morning. No, we, ha so. we have one up, and uh, he reviewed it to the thing that uh, at CES that they kept comparing it to, or at least saying uh -huh. the performance was going to be uh, similar to, and that was um, comparing it to like a 1050 Ti. Right. Right. Um, which uh, we were kind of disappointed to see a lot of the other review sites didn't make that comparison. Um, because, you know, it's... Kind of like one of the well, things you want to see it compared to. How, okay, so um, how did it fare? Uh, it actually did pretty well. Um, let me, I'm looking for this uh, for this dang right part of the review to cite here. But um, yeah, basically it ended up um, about 10% uh, faster than a 1050 Ti nice. in a system. And this is in a very small form factor thing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were impressed overall. It ran reasonably quiet. Um, you know, it's just, it's not the standard four inch by four inch kind of square that you're used to for an Intel Nook. Uh, Intel's right. kind of been toying around with this other form factor for a while now. They did, uh, you know, this is the second, I, I believe, the second version of a, of a Nook that, you know, is this kind of a wider uh, form factor that is more like a NVIDIA Shield style. Mm -hmm. um, you know, size of a box, right? Um, yeah, but did good. I mean, if you want something that you can legit, you know, game on to some degree. Um, mm -hmm. Well, 1080p gaming know. is going to be fine. Intel yeah. is pretty adamant that it's like, you know, the lightest, smallest VR ready. I would say most VR applications are going to be gasping a little bit per breath on on this processor. Yeah, but, you might uh, be kind of pushing it for for ninety frame per second VR stuff on this, yeah. depending on, on which the, game yeah. you're trying to do. Yeah, uh, that's that's um, with the Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics, right? Um, Three point one gigahertz yes. Intel Core i seven eighty eight oh nine G, which is pretty nice. Um, did it come pre configured with sixteen gigs of Kingston HyperX, or do you guys have to build that into there? Uh, it, this sample came to us just with everything installed, but uh, I think that their their plan is for it to be like a bare bones where you know you okay. add what you want. Um, it's about a thousand dollars before you load the memory and the SSD into it. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So total configuration as we tested was seventeen hundred bucks. Um, and that is you know with you having to get those other parts and. And adding them after, unless unless some vendor decides to just toss them in and sure. ship it that way. Um, but still, decent system. And for something like this, it's it's that you want that much power in something super tiny. So right. there's there's your price premium right there, right? Here's, you know, because you, you could build something with equal or better power than this for way cheaper if you're willing to deal with a big honking desktop case sitting sure. next to you. Um, yeah, but this is you know decent system. If you need something tiny and you're you know you're really cramped for space, um, or you just want that elegant kind of install thing is where you can just have you know you're one of those people with the super postmodern style desk set up and at your house, <laughs> clear glass table, and you want everything you know that's in in view. Uh, you, you need to sit this next to your trash can Mac Pro, right? You know, um, actually this might be faster. <laughs> It would, um yeah certainly uh certainly not as irritating to expand uh decent access of ports on it too which is always a plus the uh 
Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm torn between being delighted uh, by the fact that it's got that much graphical power on board and wanting a gaming machine with even more graphical power, although simply buying a GPU is still problematic. Although I recently saw a sort of sub-825 millimeter 1060 on sale for like $538. And I was like, oh! And then I remember that that's... Uh, that's know, like... It's like two hundred eighty over MSRP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. it seems so affordable, and then I remembered what the actual MSRP was, and I got a lot less excited because I'm I'm looking for a GPU to put into this tiny machine that I'm building, and I was yeah. like, I should like no, that's a lot of money. <laughs> don't don't do it. Don't do it. They are coming down slowly because the mining thing is starting to not be as insane as it has been for the past several months. So um, yeah. you know, we're kind of hoping that the but unfortunately. What I mean by prices coming down to MSRP is people selling their used uh, GPUs, right. um, you know. But they are getting there. Uh, they're kind of trickling down very, very slowly. Anybody selling people... a very short used GPU? Let me know. Um, and that uh, what I actually think of as Intel's Super Nook uh, is uh, you can pre-order it now. Deliveries uh, should be happening in the next couple of weeks on that one. 